G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the podcast and today we have an extremely special podcast with one of my clients, Sam Ackland. Now who is Sam Ackland? Well firstly he's a beast, he has, I'm just going to read out some of his t- titles real quickly. He is the SA Young Entrepreneur of the Year for 2020, he is the 2020 Top 40 Under 40 Entrepreneur Award winner, he's a 2021 Australian Achiever Awards for the South Australia winner, and he is the 2021 AFR Most Innovative Companies Awards finalist, which is fantastic. And in this episode, we share all the secrets and all the good stuff with all of the work that we do. And basically, what I want to get you a picture of is how personalized it, how personalized it is, essentially, when you really work on yourself or you have someone that you really work with or you have a coach or something like that. We work on all these different revolutionary things and on a broad range of different topics in order to optimize someone's life, their body, their mindset, everything. And Sam lives and breathes like all of this stuff. And I'm just really impressed with Sam because he's taken everything on board as best as possible with an open mind and an open heart. And we have seen some crazy results. Like he even just messaged me and texted me this morning. Like he said, I'll just get it up for you really quickly because I really like to share it. It's quite fantastic. Just so I don't miss exactly. He said, bro, day eight on the steam train, all aboard. And you can see that right under there. If it focuses there you go. So you can even see that on the um, on the video there. So he said that, which I think is like quite fantastic. So he said eight days in a row of optimizing at his absolute peak and feeling as best as possible, which is fantastic. And I just wanted to share this podcast with you because you can get it too. And obviously, not everyone's going to be jumping on for coaching. So I would like to share this stuff with you guys so you guys understand what's going on. And hopefully you take some tips out of it. That's my main go main goal. So of course, guys, I have coaching available. If you're interested and you listen to this podcast and you would like to do a free strategy call with me, just head to my website, go to coreyboutwell.com and apply for a call with me and we can go through some really cool stuff. Secondly, bone broth. Guys, I have been, I'm so adamant about bone broth. It's so good and it's so healthy. And you can use the code Corey12 at theherbaldoctors.com to get yourself best of the bone bone broth. That is the best one because it looks like a goo. It's not in a powder. It hasn't had heat extraction therapy and it hasn't had high pressure extraction therapy. So therefore the bone broth is in its most ultimate quality. You get all the minerals, all the vitamins, all the omegas, all the essential fats, all the good proteins in there and it just, and all the collagen. It just makes your skin and your brain beautiful. The other one I'd like to mention to you guys is this podcast is sponsored by Eternum Labs. This is Eternal Labs podcast and Eternum Labs, if you don't know, is amazing. We have some new products coming out. I would significantly or I'd highly suggest you have a little bit of research onto Apigenin and what it does. Super anti-aging and really, really good for sleep and it's really good for your heart and your brain. And there's a whole bunch of science on that and we're going to get into that. Eternum Labs will have some articles coming out soon and you can have a look at the product if you head to eternumlabs.com.au and if you want to try it in your sleep sack because it's a bit of a new revolutionary thing at the moment and if you want to get it before everyone else does because I'm pretty sure we're going to be the only place in Australia that sells it, head to eternumlabs.com.au, punch in the code Corey, get 10% off. So without any further ado, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this podcast and please, it would really help me if you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, put a comment or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and also share the YouTube video or share the podcast on your story. Why is that? The reason I ask you is because all of these little things contribute to the YouTube and podcast algorithm. And essentially by you guys doing those things and and hitting those like buttons and hitting the subscribe buttons really helps this podcast to get to a broader wide range of audience and you can help share this information with everyone and it's really gonna help me as well. So if you do choose to do those things, I appreciate you so much. So I hope you enjoy this uninterrupted podcast with me and Sam Ackland and as always, feel free to reach out to either of us. Thank you. Sam Ackland, welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, dude. I've uh, picked myself a quiet little corner um, in my accountant's office, so I'm going to be under wraps today. I'm not going to be swearing heaps. Um, I'm going to keep it 
pretty level-headed, I suppose, unlike our usual catch-ups. Yeah, I like that. Um, so if someone doesn't uh, know and they want to know like who Sam is, obviously I've just given you the intro, but Sam is one of my clients that I work with and he just lives and embodies the, the example of... I think of what people should basically sort of strive to be in terms of just being able to self-reflect and be willing in, willing to do the work in order to optimize themselves. And I really respect that about Sam. So, man, I just love to just dive in and start talking about roughly sort of why you sort of reached out um, for coaching. Sweet. Um, we met at a Flinders Uni alumni event. We were both like the keynote speakers, I think. And we had some groups with us and um, I had my own demons going on. But the thing that stuck out to me was you've got all of these professionals in this room and then there's this one dude in the corner who is absolutely fucking jacked and he's just <laughs> glowing. And there was something about him. I was like, I'm going to fucking talk to that guy in a minute. So after that event finished, I went over and we just striked up the most random conversation about microdosing and psychedelics and <laughs> yeah one thing led to another and then afterwards in reflection i was like and i did a little research um and in reflection i was like maybe maybe this is the guy maybe this is the guy that could help out so um <clears throat> yeah something that i was having a bit of trouble with was um kind of coming to terms with being a professional um you know as like an executive director role being getting better and better and developing as a person um, and as an executive, um, but then having a baby thrown into the mix um, and not really understanding or acknowledging how difficult it was going to be um, and having a few very real moments of um, fear to go home and um, a few other elements that I was kind of struggling with and having a real connection with uh, my son, who's now eight months, um, and yeah, there was a few other things. I'd been going to the gym on and off for five, 10 years. I've had a good life membership probably longer than most people in the country um, <laughs> and just not seeing any results. So it was kind of like not having real, I was having real love, but not a true understanding of love and not achieving any results um, as a high performance athlete, um, but still achieving results at work. So it was kind of like, I wasn't living up to my true me, but on the outside, it looked like I was performing well. So um, it was kind of getting those two elements to to be level. I'm I appreciate the work that I do, um, but also externally, everybody else appreciates the work that I do as well. So it's kind of getting that level, um, getting myself internally up to speed with um, kind of external performance. So yeah, yeah, because that's like a this, <laughs> yep, real, real quick way of getting right in there. Um, <laughs> As well, like, yeah, one thing that you obviously that you're extremely, or I've noticed is that you're obviously extremely strict on work because that's what you do, that's what you love, that's what you breathe. You're extremely strict on work. Mm. And I was just a few other things that you just sort of wanted to really dive deep in, understand why, and get some strict and some just bounce some things, some ideas, and get really clear on the other things because you were like, well, if I'm performing this well in work, this is what I'm just presuming by, by the way. It's like, surely I can presume. I can I can succeed this well with myself, which is is, is that is, would that be correct to say? Is, yeah, 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 exactly. And and uh, there was a little part of me that um, I don't know had had an interest in religion, not for the fact to be religious, not to go. Oh, I'm going to go get baptized again and re be reborn. It was it was there was something about me that was interested in man's spiritual journey. And that's something that you're very passionate about. So it's kind of like trickling in the spirituality to understand why, and we do a lot of work on the masculine, understand why the masculine is driven to succeed and getting an understanding of, yeah, why there's this inner voice in me who was like, maybe you should go to church. And then the <laughs> other part of me is like, eh, not for me. <laughs> um, yeah, very, very true. So as well, because you have like, you've had like awesome success with your company and your business. Like tell us a little about exactly what you do. Cool. So uh, Build Clean is my company. We operate here in South Australia. Um, over the past couple of years, we have become like I like to think the uh, biased opinion, um, but the known name in builders cleaning. Um, traditionally, it's something that was a complimentary service um, offered by other cleaning companies. Um, we kind of, took the construction side of it 
and that's all we do. So we double down on construction. Um, and yeah, we hand over some of Adelaide's nicest homes um, yeah, on a daily basis. So we've got a team now of uh, over 40. Um, I've got a co-director as well. He kind of lets me take the spotlight, takes the hit in front of the crowd, and uh, he definitely executes and, and gets everything done. So it's a great dynamic of um, sales and marketing in one side and, and uh, operations on the other. Um, yeah, and that leads yeah. us to today. Yeah, and it's really interesting actually just watching your, your, your journey through all that. It's just like, it's just quite fantastic just to watch the growth between your business and like yourself. So before we were just talking about um, uh, like the masculine side of things as well and like the mas- masculine spirituality and I really like how, how, how the stuff that we've been working on, I, I, what I think it does is working on this masculine like spiritual stuff is sort of it just helps you accept yourself as a man and sort of take off a little bit of the pressure like why am i like this why am i like this and it's like oh it's just because it's because i'm a guy <laughs> like, exactly. I, exactly i get it and we're allowed to like forgive ourselves and and like you know process things and and have stuff happen so Spot which on. i think is quite fantastic also i would just Ooh. like to ask you the question what do you think are some of the biggest lessons that you have learnt um through, through through us like working together that you think is really practical and like for someone else who is in a similar position to you that they could really take away or 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 even just just think about before we start getting into like the nitty-gritty just like some like actual lessons not actually yeah. like to do's <clears throat> in terms of not stuff tactics like, yeah not <laughs> tactics we won't get into the logical cool, masculine cool, cool, cool. brain stuff yet but um, um yeah i think that the easiest thing that we have done and the most like readily implementable was just starting up a shared set of notes i just wrote down my workout i try and stick to my workout um i write down my weekly schedule i try and stick to my weekly schedule scheduling um and obviously my life will not obviously but you'll notice throughout today that my life is heavily scheduled so scheduling rest days scheduling my diet work out what i'm going to eat offloading all of this information that floats around in my head put it down onto paper or into notes in your phone and then just look at it see what i need to do particularly walk into the gym have a browse at it i can see the weights i need to do i can see the exercise i need to do i listen to myself if i'm not feeling up to it i'll skip this i'll skip that i'll substitute it for a walk you know it's uh yeah, I think having things written down, I find notes really easy because it's in my pocket all the time, um, but it kind of offloads having to remember all of this stuff um, and it's just a list of instructions for me to follow. So I believe I take instructions pretty well, even if I set them for myself. Yeah, and you've been a lot more consistent since then? Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. Nice. So, like <clears throat> yeah, particularly one I found really fun, well, not fun to think about, but fun now to have under control is the nutrition and diet. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into all of the biohacking subs as well, which is like making yourself a science experiment, which is <laughs> wicked. Um, but it, like in simplistic terms, just um, getting a massive salad box, eating the same thing every lunch. So I know that I eat at, you know, 9, 12, 3, 6. So there's no snacking anymore. There's no, I'll just grab that muesli bar. Or I'll just quickly whip into the shop here. It's like, eat at this time, don't fucking eat. So, and then, I mean, there's... <laughs> Yes and no's to that strategy, but we've spoken about how my life's on the road. So my idea of eating quickly would be a pasty and it's like, do I eat a pasty or do I just not eat, maybe grab a coffee instead? So, um, yeah, yeah. Scheduling out my diet has given me a heap of consistency because then I can plan out, pack what I need, jump in the car and I've got everything there. Yeah. Love that. What would be some other lessons? <clears throat> Some of the other lessons. Lessons or insights? Um, lessons and insights. Knowing more about myself and the things that make me tick and the things that fill up my energy bucket and the things that take away from it has given me like a few, I suppose, wild card options in my back pocket. So as I was saying before, if I'm not feeling up to something at the gym or it's been a shit house day or um, I'm just gradually feeling more and more tired as each day goes on, um, I know that I can go up to there's a, a um, like a wildlife reserve near my house. I can go up there. I can walk by the creek. It takes me an hour. I come back like straight away. You don't feel refreshed, but the next day and the day's on. 
kind of builds up that that new energy. So it's finding out things like that that you would typically think like, oh yeah, I went for a walk the other day, and you would never really reflect on it and go, that was the thing that made me feel better. Um, but like, you get a lot of people who surf and they say that you know going out in the ocean makes them feel great. They don't actually understand why, but they know that that makes them feel good. So. Um, yeah, I have got a little nature bucket that needs to be filled up every now and then. Um, and I know when to pull that card out when I, when I need to. Nice. Anything else as well while you're at it? Oh man, there's probably a thousand things. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Well, well, why do you think that they're like, why do you think it's important to like know about yourself? Oh, the, the main thing for me is to have zero downtime. So Downtime for me means I might make poor decisions. I might snap at people. I can't lead effectively. So all of these little 1%, 0.5% little things that we can change or alter or gain control of, um, I leave the rest of the kind of external life. I can take a bit more control over it. So I leave less up to chance. Um, yeah, understanding more about myself definitely gives me more control. Yeah, I can see that. And and obviously those things are going to lead into and help you be like the best version of yourself, which is what we're all out here to do and really like inspire to be. And some people make the, the shift and the change to try to be the best versions of themselves and go out there and actually chase it. Why do you think it's important that people go after and try to be the best version of themselves? Oh, dude, I'm so against mediocrity. I think <laughs> mediocrity is just... <clears throat> It just gets me frustrated. Yep. Like, why bother going to work and pushing yourself for 38 hours and then take it half an hour, 45 minutes lunch and then try and sneak an extra seven minutes in there somewhere and then spend a few hours on social media and then look at the time and be like, oh, I could go home soon. Then you go home to the family and you don't really have a positive connection. You don't have a true connection with people and you're just waiting for your shit TV show to start. Like, just sounds like crap. What's the point of living? <laughs> grow up. Go bungee jumping or something. Psych yourself <laughs> up. Get excited. So, yeah, yeah that's kind of a, a big thing. It always has been a big thing for me to not settle for mediocrity. Like, at 19, I went and got the pursuit of happiness tattooed on my arm. Way bigger than I probably should, but here we are living with the aftermath of that. <laughs> um, but it is a constant reminder for me. Um to live my life on a pursuit of happiness, not necessarily that happiness is an end goal, but it is a pursuit, a journey of ups and downs and um, I suppose finding a bit of inner peace along the way. So, yeah, I do all of this so that I don't settle for mediocrity. <laughs> yeah, I sort of like that aspect. And, like, you do some pretty revolutionary stuff in your business as well in terms of, like, actual how you do stuff with employees. I'd love for you to, to dive into that a little bit as well because you're always trying to optimize like as well because I know because you recognize that and because you you've, you do those with yourself, it's like, cool, well, let's do this for like our employees and stuff as well. So really like sort of yeah. your leadership framework with things. I'd love to talk about that a little bit. Cool. So in a nutshell, we're a service-based business. Um, we trade hours for dollars and our staff predominantly are casual um <clears throat> so as a company your idea of efficiency is to get people to finish jobs as fast as possible from an employee point of view to earn enough to support a living you want to be at work as long as possible so the two have very conflicting views um so something that we um kind of uh, our early day vision um was live more and waste less and it has environmental aspects to it but the main part was <clears throat> to find a structure in our company that would enable staff to um, work hard, work fast and get rewarded additionally for it to make up for the difference um, that they would have spent had they have dragged the job out. Um, so that's kind of the waste less component of human resources. But on the other side of it, if they can do eight hours of work in six hours, they get to live more, you get more time with your family, you still get the same take home package at the end of the year or the end of the week or whatever it is. Um, so running on those kind of ideologies, we, um, tried to implement some ways to incentivize, um, and really in, like incentives don't work in every industry, but when a staff member is getting paid casually, is getting paid per hour, you do need to have some kind of gamification, some kind of 
financial reimbursement for the increases in their efficiency. So I read a book um, by Jack Stack and Bo Burlingham uh, called The Great Game of Business. Um, I think it's about new core steel or some kind of steel um, manufacturing in the United States, um, probably written 50 odd years ago. Um, and it had some really interesting concepts to um, gamification of, of a service-based or manufacturing company um, and the, uh, the reimbursements that you can do. So that was kind of the basis for, for how we got to um, some of the things that we do now. Um, and we do, yeah, incentive-based commission at the moment. Awesome. It's just, I love it. It's just like so revolutionary. And especially like in South Australia, <laughs> which I, <laughs> probably isn't one of the most revolutionary of states. It's sort of the city stuck and trapped in time, that's no, for sure. You take, you, you take South Australia or Adelaide, like ultra conservative. You take cleaning, is like low ticket, super slow moving, completely mature market you take construction as well heavily volatile well you sort of I, it I out. figure if, yeah if we can make it here i suppose we can give it a red hot crack anywhere else so um yeah yeah i'm glad that we're putting a pressure pressure cooker here in adelaide and um really have to follow our reputation because everybody knows everybody yeah, for sure. And that, like that breeds in a whole lot more responsibility as well, which is what I find like fantastic and thrive off of is just like in terms of just like being a really good leader. Um, I really think that responsibility is one of the most important things that you can take on. And it's not just being a really good leader in terms of things like as, as someone who is just using myself as an example. As a man who's uh, striving to be one of the best at just whatever they can become, I know that one of the goals that we want to be out there is to be a really good dad. And like one of my goals is like, how am I going to be a really good dad? And that is firstly, you want to have to be like a really good, a good leader because that's what's going to happen. And obviously you're experiencing that because you are a leader in your business and you are like a dad. So you get to do all of everything at once. And I just like to know, like in terms of, cause like we coach and we, we talk about a lot of these different things is what do you think are some of the, like your favorite things that, that we have done, which have, that have had a, like an impact for you? Sweet. Oh, the, the biggest thing that we do together and something that you can't really do on your own is the trip to hell, trip to heaven. Um, <laughs> kind of for those who don't know, or for those who have done it, let's relive it real quick. Um, <laughs> A trip to hell is a scenario played out over increments of, let's say, oh, it's starting from birth um, out to forecasting, let's say, 50 years from today. Um, and it really delves into all of the bad things that have happened and all of the bad memories and then all of the potential bad outcomes that could happen if I was to give in to the devil on my shoulder. Yeah. Um, or give in to desire and greed and those kind of elements. Um, and then a trip to heaven is really awesome. It kind of takes all of the fun experiences that happen through your life, all of the standout memories that really made you proud um, and happy and excited and got you lit up and then forecast those out if I could be or when I become the best person that I can be or continue to be the best person that I am. Um, these are all the positive things that can happen. So it gives you kind of uh, two different scales um and that was really important because it drove home the fact that one little um not mistake but one little decision now can compound over time to have drastic effects and that little decision could be a positive or a negative one for sure and that was like an exercise that we, that we did and it took and it was like multiple sessions one was trip to hell one was trip to heaven and like it took quite some time for us to even like get to that position. So a lot of people will be like, oh, that might be like a really good idea. It depends if you're doing it with yourself or you're working with someone and, and start to go through that actual exercise. Um, welcome you to do it whenever you like, but like it took us a little while for us to actually sort through and get through some things and like really learn each other before running through that exercise before we actually get all of the big benefits out of it, which is, which is great. What else, what else have you enjoyed? Mm. Um, I really enjoy understanding the masculine and feminine archetypes. Yep. Um, something really important, I suppose, becoming, being a new dad 
um, and also having to really understand my relationship with my fiance and my relationship with my son and how my actions were projected out and also how others' actions um, can be read and interpreted. So, yeah, and it was really interesting to have a, a, I believe I've got a basic understanding of the masculine and feminine, feminine archetypes. It's really fun to then look out into the world and see people that I know and try and understand what archetype they're wearing at that particular time. Um, I can even look back to Shameless Plug when I wrote a book a year and a half ago, and I can tell that I was wearing a real um, egopreneur kind of um, aggressive warrior style um, <laughs> archetype because it's all like, fuck this, drive growth, get sales. And I look back at it now, I'm like, yeah, well, that's the kind of guy I was in that period. And it worked, but it's not the kind of guy I'm now. So, yeah, it's interesting to, to have an understanding of, of the different archetypes and the different kind of masks that you can wear um, throughout the day and, and throughout longer periods. Dude, what are some examples? What are some examples that you had? Obviously, you had, you had the ego trainer there. Love that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we used a term for Sam when he wasn't was he was an entrepreneur, but he was too egotistical. We call him the ego trainer, <laughs> which is great. Exactly. But do you, do you have any other exactly. examples mm-hmm. in terms of like with yourself when your self reflection, where you're like, oh, this is where I was more masculine. This is where I wasn't masculine in terms of like our relationship. This is what something that I needed to learn here, or this is what I, I found out. Just some little things and reflections that you had mm. um, whilst you learned these things and were applying them. Yeah. Um, uh, when, through some of our reflection, um, looking at myself, I well, we uncovered that I um, under pressure scenarios and in conflict, I can switch off. Um, and it's having a bit of an emotional disconnect. It's disconnecting from my feminine side and wearing a more masculine warrior archetype um, where I can just, I have the ability to shut off my feelings. Um, and that kind of thing would happen, let's say, for example, the baby cries. I get emotional because it's your own baby. But then the baby cries to this next level and my instinct just goes, Phew, shuts off where no emotion exists. Um, and having to come to terms, well, have, firstly, having to understand why that happened and then coming to terms with knowing when that kind of shield comes up and then working out how to bring it back down as well. So that's kind of a, a big one that I'm still working on because that um, sound can really bring a shield up quickly and then having to bring it back down is kind of the harder part um, of that whole process. So that's a real big one that sits with me. Yeah, cool. What else? Um, I have to be very careful not to, I'll touch on the warrior one a lot because it's one that I find very comfortable to wear. Yeah. Um, I have to be very careful to not wear the warrior all the time at work. Um, because I'm a leader, I need to be a magician and I need to be a king. So I need to, um, I need to think creatively. I need to think about the future. Um, and I also need to lead with dignity and integrity. So um, wearing a warrior all the time is very reactive. It's very here and now. It's very um, snappy, whereas wearing a, a bit of a king archetype um, lets me kind of take on the information, absorb it, um, and then lead by example as opposed to leading from like an aggressive emotion. Yeah, as in the get things done. But the warrior doesn't always have to be aggressive. Just just to put just a little FYI. No, no, no I just want it very easy comfortable to, to wear that warrior. <laughs> <laughs> it was just to get in there, Mister, like getting it done. It's like leave it, leave it with me. I'll get it done. And yeah. and yeah. instead of like trusting or trying to get in for and like allowing exactly. someone else it's, to do it or the, or the take perfect the summary is if you want something done right, do it yourself. That is the the warrior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good way to put it, for sure. Mm. For sure. So, <laughs> yeah, I love that. So, just in terms of also, because we did like a whole bunch of work, obviously, on the um, masculine and feminine and, and archetype stuff. But how have you also, like, what was, I'm just trying to think of the best way to ask this question. What would be the best way for you if you were to convince someone else? to prioritize their health and then they come to you and they're like, okay, like I really wanted to 
Um, or they talk about something that said I'm in pain or, or, or I wouldn't say that. I say they're like, oh, I'm tired. I don't get this done, whatever it is. I keep doing this and I keep falling into these patterns. And you could very easily see that all that person mm. needed to do would be just to prioritize their health. But you don't say anything. And then that person yeah. comes up to you and then says to you like, hey, man, what would you say? Like, well, I know I need to sort my health out. Like, what do I do? What, what are some of the things that you would suggest someone to do um, in a mindset wise and also um, physiologically as well that have worked for you? Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> the, the hardest for them, the easiest for me would be come spend seven days with me, get up when I get up, do what I do. <laughs> it probably wouldn't have the same effect because people, everyone's got their own different yeah. buckets that they need to fill up. Yeah. Um, but it would kind of give an insight into this is the kind of energy that it takes to, to sustain the amount of output that I need to do yeah. on a weekly basis. Yeah. So come even go 48 hours with me from getting up at five to um, doing like a couple minutes of meditation for that meeting. For me, that's a massive thing. Um, journaling, chatting with the staff, getting my work done, eating at specific times, eating the same thing over and over. But it's not just like, I just have a bowl of yogurt. It's like sprinkling this, chucking that in. <laughs> this is where it's all like, yeah. it's all premeditated. Um, but to continue to function at, I think, my optimal performance. I'll probably look back on this in a year's time, but <laughs> sucker, that was not optimal performance. <laughs> but it's optimal for me now. We're all learning um, and growing. Yeah. Man. <clears throat> um, yeah, following me for a day would be an interesting insight to see if somebody wanted to commit to it because the first four, six, eight weeks probably, because there's so many changes and none of them yet are a habit, it was really hard to get on board to feel the energy. Um, and like, yes, you'd have great days, but it would also have this bit of a roller coaster to it um, and then get the consistency of it. So um, getting up to speed or I suppose cleansing yourself a little bit of some bad habits it was really difficult. Um, I think just for somebody to somebody to come in and, and start getting things moving forward, I think just start taking a bit of inventory on what you're doing. Um, I think taking a food log could be a little bit too intense because it's quite labour intensive. Um, but maybe just jot down um, times that you're going to eat, time that you're going to go to the gym, time that you're going to spend for yourself. Um, and start getting a little bit of um, some ritualization into every day. Um, something that I oh, that stuck with me from um, Aubrey Marcus. Uh, I think it's even the title of his book, Own the Day, Own Your Life. Yeah. Um, and I think it just it hits so close to home. Like if you can have one really good day, that compounds into the next day, into the next day, into the next day. So I think yeah, um, double down and try and nail one day. Um, it doesn't have to be saint. You can still have ice cream for dessert. Do some things that you enjoy. And then over time, those things that you did enjoy don't carry so much enjoyment. So things will yeah, compound and get better and better as time goes on. So you don't have to go out and eat Quarry's diet and have fucking chicken and broccoli for breakfast. Hey, <laughs> come on. Lunch. I do not <laughs> recommend chicken and broccoli, man. You do that as a tease. I never recommend chicken and broccoli. <laughs> You want to have a... I'm anti-chicken um, and broccoli. Seared barramundi. <laughs> um, Cruciferous vegetables. I don't even know how to say the word. And then for lunch, we're going to be having a seared kangaroo. No. Um, it's going to be seared in lemon and vinegar. And maybe a dash of olive oil, depending on what day it is. Um, and I'm going to have vegetables with that as well. Because I just love vegetables. Corey needs a few carbs in his diet. <laughs> and then on Thursdays, oh, we don't eat at all. <laughs> no, that's good. That's really good. He's nailed it, guys. You guys got a perfect diet right there. If you want to optimize yourself, that is literally just do exactly what Sam said. Just pretty much nailed it. Go but down yeah. to Willie's and try and find yourself a barramundi and a kangaroo. Get that in one <laughs> shot. Like, it's not that easy, man. <laughs> oh, dude, it's genius. But it's it's a it's a different life and it's a better life making some better food choices. But I think the main point that one of them that you were making, which I really respect, was like don't have to worry about that straight away. Obviously, that's like sort of an end game end result in terms of like cool that would be optimal to get to in terms of like my energy and performance but that's just going to take a little while to get there and 
And yeah. it's just like just doing the next thing, getting sorted and obviously yeah, taking inventory and just the stuff that you can start to do now, which is really cool. So I'd just like to, before I ask another question is what are some of that like in terms of your journey with us, um, what do you think? Because someone else could be going through the same thing and mm. like you had a journey through just slowly building up. Like we didn't start doing any like the, any of the, the sort of the, the craziest stuff um, until we were like a couple of months in. Of, of um of, of working through all the different processes for things so like what was your journey and sort of like okay i started here and then i sort of would you like break it up maybe just like into thirds make it easy so i was like yep. all right and then i started doing this and then that was really good and then my routine sort of, sort of looked like this and this is really good and now this is like what i'm doing now sweet um i started off thinking there has got to be something more to what i'm doing an achievement kind of didn't have the same effect um, after a while, you get a bit like, I suppose, like used to what you do. Um, so we started off by just having um, a couple pre-meditated meals. So it'll be a tuna and salad for lunchtime. And I get HelloFresh because it's just so easy. And it disappoints me about how much rubbish there is, but it's a story for another day. <laughs> May I interrupt um, to you just real quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to say that, just to acknowledge that throughout this this like podcast, we've mentioned food like it's been brought up multiple times. Every time we said something like, "Oh, we've been multi- we've like mentioned," it's food. so easy. How, yeah, but you how important? It had do, such a, yeah. you wouldn't think it had such a dramatic effect. Yeah, how, how um, important do you, you think it is? Look like, at the <laughs> shit that you eat during the day. <laughs> like, even I've started food logging now, and last Sunday, like. I don't think it, no single vegetable was harmed in the making of my diet last Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so but how important do you think it is actually like from someone? Because at first, when we first look at things, you're like, cool, I'd like to sort something out sort of like nutritionally. Um, eventually, mm. we'll get something sorted. And then now where we're like, we're at the stage where we're going really deep into all the nutrition stuff. Like we did all the mindset stuff. We've done the philosophy. We've done a lot of the masculine feminine energies. We know why Sam is like he is. We know why he does what he does. We know what makes him tick. We know what makes him feel fantastic. We understand his big goals and his dreams and what he needs to go to focus towards them. We understand how he gets there and his passion and his drive for desire, which is just like unrelentlessly just, mm. just, just so advanced. I'm just super impressed. And now it's like, all right, we're diving really deep on the food. Like, and it's so important. And it's like, what, what was sort of like that shift for you to be like, oh, I just, God damn, food is actually as important as what I think it is for my it's, energy. It's such a rest, retrospect thing because when you're not so heavily concentrated on when and what you're eating, you don't know anything else. So I think you kind of broke it down to me a while ago because I mean, construction and kind of understand that a little bit more than most other things. Um, you're like, nutrition is the foundation that a house is built on. And then we're going to put the walls up. We're going to fill it with good and bad ghosts. And we're going to put a roof on and we're going to make it really nice. But if you are to um, skip the foundation and start getting really deep on spirituality or, and um, really deep on biohacking and optimizing, the ebbs and flows of your life are going to be like, I had two amazing days and then I couldn't leave the house for four days and then I had one amazing day and then I couldn't do anything for three days. So the, having that strong foundation um, of good nutrients and good food gives the body the stability um, to be able to stack one thing on top of the other, on top of the other and have the consistency for it to continue to go forward. Um, and I did realize as well in my um being quite naive i thought that i would never have a down day and had like three down days of just detox and not realizing that my body was like cool you've given me a consistent lifestyle to deal with now i'm going to shed some shit um, <laughs> so yeah i think that was quite an important thing to note as well is that you can do all the best things in the world and your body still wants to cleanse some of the toxins that it's got in it so yeah um How'd yeah you feel build post- a strong foundation yeah how'd you feel post- post- cleanse? man i'm still on the up like <laughs> nice. following the aura <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it just gets better and better and better so i think it's something to look forward to having one of those cleanses. um and i think i pushed it on myself as well like i thought i was getting sick flu sick 
So I started pumping heaps of cold pressed juices and I swear to God, I stripped myself from the inside out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a good thing to lose like four kilos and probably not the smartest way to do it. But I thought I was getting sick. So I thought I'd just pump as many um, cold pressed juices as I could so my body wouldn't spend energy digesting it. It would just get the nutrients straight away. But that was so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you actually would. I think like personally that you'd probably get a lot of nutrients out of that. But that's another talk for a whole different conversation. Yeah. We're back to the yeah. original question from like, all right, started here. This is what it looked like. Cool. You started doing this and then you got convinced and you're like, yes, I'm convinced Sweet. now. Sticking to the good one. So life. it was nutrition. It was a yep. good diet. It wasn't even nutrition. It was just eat good food. Yep. Um, and then it was map out the times so that I'm going to eat good food so that I can have some consistency around it. And then pretty quickly we started looking at um, – my workouts and what kind of output I was doing. Yep. And straight away we were like, you're not a bodybuilder. Yes, you need to have good form for the exercise that you're doing so that you don't get injured. But like, I don't need to be overhead squatting a hundred kilos. Like I just need to be doing good, strong exercises um, and doing them well, doing them focused and not going for one rep maxes and, you know, massive weight. That's not my goals. Um, yeah, so we got our workout sorted and then after about oh, after quite a few weeks a couple months of consistency um i started to want more so and i think you drip feed the elements that we need but i would have days where i would be like give me everything now and then it would be kind of like tone back okay hone in on the times that you're eating get it consistent water intake Celtic salt so that you're not losing the water that comes in. So you're not just constantly filtering crap. Um, it was all the kind of little things that we stack on and stack on and stack on. And then you look back over, um, you know, the past uh, four months and see like it would have started as something really difficult um, and a lot of resistance to a lot of it. And now it's kind of like, this is easy. This is what I do. This is who I am. Like, give me the next thing. So then we started stacking on some fun subs, um, some Eternum Lab subs, um, some uh, mushroom extracts, um, and just some really good quality vitamins and nutrients. So those kind of things sit in my um, non-negotiables of these are the things that I like to get me humming. Um, and... What do we do? Air purifier was a pretty cool one in your bedroom. Starting yep. to get a bit more zen in the bed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Sick. I love that. So, what what sort of vitamins and things that have been working for you at the moment? Oh, the, the Thorn Advanced Nutrients is just the one multi that you don't have to worry about anything else. It's a hack. I mean, you, we still stack on the other things that we need, and that's. Um, well, the other things that I need, and that's going off of um, DNA tests and things, that not just speculating like, oh, I need to have a krill oil tablet. It's like, no, your DNA says that you need extra of this and this and this. So, um, but yeah, starting with the with an advanced nutrients, um, and you can tell it's potent because if you have too much, you will feel nauseous. So, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> kind of one you of those things sick. where like. Yeah. Need to build up a That's a um, <laughs> shout out to Muscle Nerds if anyone's um, listening at the moment and you want to find out more about like where that come from is Muscle Nerds have a really good Instagram page and I, I did some training with them and they just like, man, you can get so many nutrients if you just like, you just follow this one multivitamin called Thorn Advanced Nutrients. It has literally everything in there. You have everything and you're like, oh my goodness, this is just so much easier. And if you do track or you want to nerd out and you want to look at all your food and see things, if you, you can put that into an app like chronometer and you can see like all the nutrients in there which is what like we do and we we have a look at and it's just like holy we get everything out of these so but what we do is like we added that in later the first thing that we were well, obviously working with you was get all the good food in first make that a really good mm. habit prioritize all of the the, the yeah. simple do, stuff do the normal shit really well yeah 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 and yeah, a lot of people don't think that eating consistently is normal, but it has to be. <laughs> you need the fuel. Yeah. I'm still trying to squeeze four meals in a day and it's hard. Like you've got to train yourself to be able to eat yeah. enough. Yeah. So yeah, 
semi fun, and- but it's semi hard to eat a tuna salad when you're not hungry. <laughs> yeah, so true. One thing that I also like to, um, um, like one of my methods of way of doing things, which is why I love bouncing off with you because we both nerd out about this is I like finding like simple tools and, and easy hacks. Like for example, if you're like, if you go, Oh, like I, I, I struggle to put, let's say you just have like Celtic salt and you, ha- you have a few different things that you want to take, whether it be vitamins or some sort of powders or something like that, whether it's like a really good quality cacao powder or some, some cinnamon, ginger, maca root for like your testosterone, just something like that using some natural stuff. I'd be like, well, if you want to use those and take those things and like you've obviously done the, the research and work and be like, cool, this may be beneficial for me and you want to start using them, it's like, well, let's get the Tupperware containers and put them somewhere where you're going to actually use them. And I love for you, yeah, for exactly. example, just to share because you're on the road all the time, you're like, well, I'm going to put some investments in my car. And I think these are the most fantastic things and it blew my mind because it's such simple tools that help you stick to things that are going to support you to crush what you love doing. And mm. like you optimize your car with a few things of that. And I'd love for you to talk about them. Sweet. Um, these, they're not even really, for me, it's optimizing my car. For most <laughs> people would just be like, man, that's just fucking wank factor. So like, <laughs> and it all just kind of covered at once. So I won't plug the kind of car, but like having a sunroof is great because you can pull it, pull the sunroof back. You're constantly in the sun during the day. Like, Yes, it would be nice if I wasn't wearing a shirt, but this is real life. I have to go to work. So um, driving there with, you know, you've got at least you're kind of getting a little bit of sun for a sunroof. So yeah. Not, yeah, it's not one of those like necessities, but it's kind of like, huh, yeah, <laughs> I will use that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I love my off-roading and camping and full driving. So I've got a fridge in my car. Um, I keep my lunch in the fridge in my car. It's just like having a fridge in the workshop. Um, but my car is my office and I probably got about a kilo and a half of tuna cans floating <laughs> around in the drawers in the back of my car. Um, <clears throat> I put charges, um, USB charges in the back by the drawers so I can eat my lunch. I can plug my AirPods in. I can plug my iPad in. Um, I don't have to be constantly moving to keep things charged. So it's kind of like my little standing office. Yeah. Um, and then I can smash lunch. I can stand up. I can call people on the phone. I can yeah, kind of double up and try and do things at the same time. Um, I love that. about efficiency. Yeah, exactly, which I find is so fantastic. And it's like you've got a few drawers, you've got a fit, you've got a fridge, and you've like decked it out for how you want. And just for anyone who's listening, um, Sam's mentioned tuna cans a few times. If you don't like tuna, you don't have to eat it. Sam likes tuna and he chooses to eat it. He has it within his lunch. So, and it's super efficient for him because he's like on the road all the time. You just rip the lid and go. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. And you are also like, I just want to get like some wisdom from you while we're at it too, is obviously you've put yourself in a really good position. And you're in a position of leadership and you're like a young entrepreneur who's, you know, really chasing like the best version of themselves. Um, what do you think are some of the best things that you have learnt in regards to leadership and business? Uh, that, that Just like a couple of tips that you've just been like, this is real fantastic and have worked really well for me, for anyone who's listening who also want to improve that. Cool. This is straying away from about well-being and just about holistic leader things this is that about I've learned. You. Yeah. This is about Straight me. Up. Cool. Yeah. The biggest thing that I have learned was from reading a book called Rocket Fuel and it explained <clears throat> the relationships between a lot of big businesses, um, a lot of long standing sustainable businesses and the relationships that they have at an executive level. Um, and Rocket Fuel really delves into um, how you have a co-directorship or a duo or a partnership, how two people um, feed off each other and what the ideal mix that they found from their studies was. So um, Rocket Fuel says that there's a visionary and there's an integrator. Um, and just that concept alone, not even having to look into the descriptions of it, it was like, shit, I'm a visionary, Jack's an integrator. I do the sales and marketing, he does the operations. I dream up ideas. He tells me they're fucking ridiculous or they're fucking genius. You know, <laughs> I go out and sell things um, and win work and build those client relationships. He continues to build those client relationships, but executes on the work. So I sell the dream. He delivers the dream. That whole concept. Um, and they go deep into the different 
um, kinds of relationships and the different mixes of it. But having that understanding to know that I'm not, I'm not selling out to ask for help. It was this is the kind of person that I am, and this is the kind of person that I suppose for the lack of better understanding, this is the kind of person that the world has put next to me. And we we got into business together before I'd read this book. And so it was a very retrospective thing. Um, but to be able to understand that, like, these are the concepts um, and this is why things work so well in our relationship. So um, just a plug for that book. I don't know who the author is. I've read it a long time ago. Um, but it was great to understand why we thrive. Oh, I absolutely love that. And for people who want to be better leaders <clears throat> and for people who want to, you know, either build a business or build a life for themselves that would be, you know, beneficial. What are some other things that um, you would encourage them to do? Hmm. Something, I don't know where I read it, something very important that always sticks out to me is that as the leader of a company or a leader of anything where people are looking up to you, your actions will be seen through a microscope and your words will be heard through a megaphone. So that kind of mentality has led me to think about everything that I do from um, having way too many beers on a Friday afternoon with the work crew um, or, you know, that's not leading by example. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, I never really come into late work, but skipping the gym and all these kind of things that you wouldn't necessarily know people are watching. But then when you think about that, um, quote or that philosophy it's kind of even though they might not have seen the exact action itself it still compounds into a group of actions um, to kind of lead me down to be the leader that I don't want to be so um, I kind of hold myself to that quite a bit um, and every now and then it does pop up and then something that adds on to that was I think it was Connor that said this about uh, how you do one thing is how you do everything and it is fucking ingrained in my mind <laughs> so that kind of leads on from that previous like your staff and your team and the people that you lead are watching you and will take on board what you do and they do listen to you and they listen to the tones not just the words that you say and then kind of stacking that on top it's like fuck man if i see a piece of rubbish on the ground because it says clean on my shirt because i run a cleaning company i have to pick the rubbish up i can't not so it has just led me down this path of like doing probably a bit more than I should, but also you look back on it, you're like, yeah, that's me. That's me right there. Yeah. So, which is a hundred percent. You just like stepping into the best version of yourself. And mm. just as like a little question for you, what, what does the best version of yourself look like? And what are the steps that you need to take or not take or like, what's the effort that you need to put in just yep. to get, to get there? Oh, the, we always talk about this. The best version of me looks like Thor. <laughs> <laughs> His actions may be different, but he looks like Thor. Um, and I do think that um, in order to lead by example and be the best version of myself, I want to, and I'm reasonably confident, I'm a very confident person, um, but I want to feel as though I've become a world-class athlete so that I can at least lead enough so somebody who looks up to me will do 80% of the work that it takes um, to get there. So I think that even though we say looks and not to be in like a vanity metric of it, but for me, the physical appearance is um, kind of a display of my internal warrior. So um, yeah, well, that's why we wear clothes, right? We Like you wear... <laughs> A build clean t-shirt and you and you wear like a really clean one because that makes you feel like the director of, of the company because that's what the director of the company would do and company would wear and a lot of the time what i believe is like it, it, what we can do with our own body and our own physiology is if we see a goal we will always look at ourselves especially men if you look at like the best version of yourself or it, it, even girls as well like you look at the best version of yourself you're like cool i would I, if I'd probably look like this and it's like, yep. well, damn, there's always, like the, there's always the physical representation of what the best person looks like. It always is. And um, it's not for the sake of, oh, I'd like to look like this to, to get more girls, to impress people, to have people compliment me. It's like, no, I want to look like that for myself so that I can bring and be in my best energy. So I really respect yeah. that you said that. And, and to be that world-class athlete and to look like Thor for one 
I'll be able to run fucking rings around my son when he becomes a toddler because <laughs> I'm in great shape. I'm physically fit. I'm nimble. I'm agile. I'm flexible. I can reach to the ground. I can touch my toes. I can jump. I can climb. I can play on the monkey bars. I can lift him. At the moment, he's only eight kilos, but every week he gains another kilo. Um, and it's only those kind of things that, um, although I want to look like Thor, I want to look like Thor because it will give me the opportunity to not only just keep up with him, but be able to say, right, Saturday morning, let's go surfing. Then let's go play in the park. Then we'll have some lunch. Then we'll go play here. We'll do this and do that. And just having that high intensity I don't need to be a world-class athlete to sprint 100 meters, but I'd like to flog him when it comes to a 100-meter sprint. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And what does that mean for you in terms of your business and leadership as well? Um, the uh, Touching on the physical again, the physical is something that, that I believe my team will be able to see the changes that I've made and the commitment that I've put into myself, the commitment that I'm putting into the company and the commitment that I'm putting into my brain and the longevity of myself. Um, I think that will naturally um, naturally flood or spread or, you know, become a part of the company. Um, and by leading like that, if everybody, maybe not everybody else, but if a lot of people can see that and be interested in it and ask questions about it, we can build our culture a lot deeper, not based on alcohol and partying which is something that was you know a big value of mine a couple of years ago and then we can we can progress our company culture onto um being true friends really understanding each other knowing about each other's family taking health and wellness seriously um city to bay comes along if COVID ever gives us a fucking break um it would be nice to have the company and we can do a fun run or a fun walk you know instead of going and doing a wine tour, why not do the city to Bay? You get the endorphins, everybody's moving, and physically fit and active and having fun. Um, and it's true, genuine fun. It's not stimulated fun. Yeah, which is obviously just directly correlates to the health of everyone and, and yourself, which hmm. is obviously going to make your company thrive. And then there's obviously commercial viability to it. The fitter and healthier your team are, the less downtime you have. Less great you have. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they are solely byproducts. <laughs> <laughs> there was Sam's just teasing there for the people that are listening. He's teasing. He cares so much yeah. about everyone. He's one of the biggest carers that I know. Um, but yeah, I get where you where you come from. <laughs> so, man, I just like to say, like, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come on this podcast and share your journey with everything. There are some absolute nuggets in there with the stuff that you were saying, especially towards the end. There was just some like some of the stuff that you were saying. It's just oh, ridiculous. Some of the books that you mentioned and and the other podcasts and stuff. If you guys want to find anything, like, or would like to reach out, ask them a question, where do they find you? Uh, get me on Instagram, um, or get me on Facebook. Or just jump on to Build Clean. You'll be able to go into the team. You'll be able to see me. I don't keep myself hidden from people. You can have my mobile number. You can have my email. Hit me up. I love questions. Whether it's business, whether it's going for a lift at the gym, like just interesting. Hit me up with anything. Um, I'm not hidden under um, any alter ego names. Just search Sam Ackland and you'll find me. Um, I've done pretty extensive work trying to get every if you search Sam Ackland on Google, I come up with the whole first page. So you <laughs> should be able to find it. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to optimize yeah, that it's, reach. It's not easy to occupy the whole first page for your name, but it's definitely worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, cool. I love that. And for anyone who's listening on this as well, and do you want to shortcut that? I'll have the links below hand if you want to ask him any, any questions. So before we leave, I'd just like to ask you one more question. So if you were, if there was anyone out there who was like, you know, had some success like you did some like financial stuff or started to have, like achieve things and started to become a good leader. And they really would want to start like investing themselves, um, investing in themselves. Like what would you recommend um, them to do? And obviously you don't have to say, get Corey as a coach because like <laughs> going to the, you don't have to say that one, but for anyone who's listening and they, and they would like yeah. a strategy call, you can go to CoreyBauer.com and apply through the, through the link exactly. there. But you've got to be committed. You've got to be ready to to be opened up um, to go straight into Corey. Because like, <laughs> you're going to learn some shit about yourself. Um, you're going to be ready for that. You're going to be ready for it. Whether you're in your darkest of your dark or your highest of your highs. Like, as long as you know that 
we're gonna open well, he's gonna open some shit up um i don't know start start from episode one of the podcast because there's a lot of basics in there on nutrition for me admittedly i skipped through every one that was about bodybuilding because i don't need to be a bodybuilder i don't need to know the intricacies of it i do exactly. like to pause and get a nice little pump but um yeah there's there's a lot of information in there about some of the hacks that we do some of the systems that we do some of the things that we get um some of the foundations that we build and pick apart those start implementing them start feeling the changes um and then reach out then pull the trigger on it dude i love that thank you like thank you so much for saying that <laughs> like, that means a lot to me you saying every, that man every now and then uh, every now and then there's like a if I need the motivation to do something, if I don't quite understand why something's working, I don't quite understand what we spoke about, I can just jump back in, have the 15, 20 minute section of information that I need to learn to upskill myself so that I understand why we're implementing something. So, um, yeah, I think the early episodes have really got the fundamentals of um, a systemized and optimized human being. Dude, oh my goodness, that like means a lot. You saying that, man, just means so much. Like, honestly, thank you. Because that's that, that, that was the sole reason that I, I started this podcast to get all those things out there and do so. Um, just saying that so genuinely, like, honestly, absolutely made my day. Easy. That's what we do, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just man. Just say the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, I'll see you soon, brother. And anyone else who's listening, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we'll see you in the next one. Lovely. Thank you. See ya.